El Santuario del Rock. As far as we understand, the album you're about to release finds some inspiration in Victorian Gothic horror. Would you please elaborate on this? Well, the, the title Cryptoriana <clears throat> is uh, an amalgam of crypt and Victoriana, so it suggests the Victorian era's infatuation with death and the spirit world. Um, the album is not wholly conceptual, but each song is, is either based in the Victorian era or it's written in the uh, in the style of one of its classic authors. Um, so it's been influenced by the likes of E.F. Benson, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Oscar Wilde, Arthur Macken, Algernon Blackwood, etc., um, yeah, there's not really a lot more to say than that, really, because people need to um, read the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I might have to add that uh, your style is known for making a lot of references to literature, and uh, that's what makes um, your music even more interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I read a lot of different stuff, and uh, when we wrote this album... Um, <clears throat> I'd so happen to have been uh, reading a lot of these authors um, at the time, and uh, it just seemed to fall very much in place with the album that, that we'd written. We'd actually gone away to Brno in the Czech Republic, which is a, a city in which the drummer Marthus and the guitarist Ashok live in. And it was like a team building exercise. We did a load of pre production, like people wrote various parts of songs or whole songs or, or just riffs that they thought could fit pieces of the puzzle. And, uh, yeah, we, we congregated there and basically it was a, a, a week and a half of assimilating songs and we came away with literally the bulk of the album written. Obviously, you know, it had to um, mutate further along. Um, we had to work on it throughout the autumn. And uh, again, it mutates when, further when you're in a studio. But the bulk of it was written um, or compiled, at least, um, on this journey to Brno. And then, obviously, um, I was sort of presented with the eight, nine songs. And from that, I got a crux of the idea of where it was going and what I wanted to write about. Well, now that you mentioned the Czech Republic... Did you find additional inspiration or probably anything in the atmosphere or from bad dynamics that added to the whole process? Um, well, obviously, we did a lot of sightseeing and it's got the second largest ossuary in in Europe, which is a place, you know, with all the ornamental skulls are stacked up and bones, like a little uh, sort of necropolis, like a shrine. Um and we went to the cathedral and the castle. Um, yeah, so obviously, yeah, took some inspiration from that. But it was the middle of summer, so it did feel like a holiday at the same time and not quite as gothic as one would have hoped. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope that it didn't take away all the gothicness from it. <laughs> as regards your previous album, Hammer of the Witches, yeah. there seems to be a fresh air to the band partially due to the guitarists. Yeah. They're definitely an asset. How would you say that record differs from this one? Well, the new album's a step up, well, a step forward from that that album. Uh, we've just improved <clears throat> our relationship with one another, our relationship to the music of Cradle of Filth. Um, this has longer songs. We've dispensed with the orchestral intro, an outro. Instead, the orchestral parts of bit in the bulk of the of the longer tracks. Um, there's definitely more um, melodic, fast gu guitar stuff. Alice or Cruelty and the Beast. Um, there's some acoustic work on there. Uh, there's an introduction of a choir, which is sort of tends toward the higher registers. Uh, like high, you know, top soprano, so it's very ghostly. Um, yeah, the songs meander. They're, they're, 
I can't describe each and every people have asked me to describe them. I said, well, just listen to it for yourself because um, I could be here all day describing because each song um, totally differs from one another. Um, we did a cover of uh, Annihilators, uh, Alison Howe as, as a bonus track. Uh, we decided to do that because we thought it, well, we wanted to do it for ages. We thought it sit, sat very well with the feel of the rest of the album. Um, very ornate, very melodic, but very eerie with a with a, a great, strong storytelling feel to it. Um, and also we bumped into uh, Jeff Waters on several occasions and told him that we wanted to do it and he gave us his blessing. So um, that was another reason, obviously, to, to undertake it now. Um, we have, uh, let me think... Um, Liv Christine, who was on um, Nymphetamine Fix um, and was formerly of Leaves Eyes, she features on a track called Vengeful Spirit, although um, she plays quite a different character to that that she played on Nymphetamine. In fact, she, she plays the Vengeful Spirit, a woman betrayed who commits suicide, returns from purgatory um, as this evil character to torments those who wronged her in life so um it's a very different song to nymphetamine um there's some really heavy stuff like death and the maiden and you will know the lion by his claw um yeah i mean it's there, there's a lot of tiny little different things that happen on this record compared to hammer of the witches um I think people are really, really will dig it. It's, uh, as I said, it's a step forward from that same lineup. Um, so we've got to, to have grown musically together. Uh, we've used the same studio with the same producer, um, which again has enabled us to experiment and, yeah, just come out with a, you know, a, a great record. Scott Atkins has been involved in the production for some time now. What would you say are the most important elements he contributes to your music? Well, he's, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he doesn't take any bullshit. Um, he won't pander to anyone. Like, you know, if he thinks something isn't good enough, he'll say it. He's a very hard worker. Um, he spends a lot of time making sure everything's perfect. So, yeah, I think they're very strong attributes for a producer. And, again, that's why we've returned to use him and his studio is local. I mean, it's not the, the biggest studio in the world, but it, you know, you're there to work. So it doesn't matter that it hasn't got like a playroom and a, <laughs> you know, cooks and whatever. It's, uh, um, yeah, we have a very strong work ethic in the band at the present. And uh, I think the album is representative of that. So in other words, uh, sincerity, meticulousness and straightforwardness to say the least of course yeah well as far as the vocals are concerned uh the range of vocal styles is quite notorious brilliant uh is there any particular criterion for deciding what sort of technique suits each passage only what suits the music uh and there's some very fast intricate um songs on this record and so there's a lot of higher screamy stuff um for deaf and the maiden which is the closer on the album it's very ponderous and heavy so that kind of demanded a really you know deaf almost death metal style in places um this yeah you would know the lion by his claw is a brutal track again vocally brutal um it ends with uh uh, a riff that's very much akin to Dusk and Her Embrace. And so I went for that really, you know, sort of extreme black metal style. Yeah, it's totally based on the music and what suits it. Well, I will have to say that Cruelty on the Beasts, every single cut is uh, one of a kind as uh, far as that aspect is concerned. Oh, cool. Thank you. You'll probably be pleased to hear that next year is its 20th anniversary. And we're we're gonna we're, we're gonna re-release it, but we're gonna remix it at the same time. Um, we've already submitted uh, a trial mix to the record company, which they really liked, because obviously we want to make it a better sounding record, but we don't want to 
dismiss the atmosphere that people loved about the record. So we're going to have to walk a very fine line with it. Mm, most certainly. It's not only me who's looking forward to more musical pomposity and grandiloquence. Thank you. And, uh, you know, beside the sonic aspects, what is the symbolism behind the image of the album cover, if any? Well, you'd have to ask the artist because I gave him three reign. But um, as far as I'm, as I, well, I know, really, um, the symbolism is you have something that's reminiscent of Botticelli's Venus rising from what looks like a theatrical stage play. And um, the subtitle of the album is The Seductiveness of Decay. So it's about man's attraction to um, self-annihilation or just dressing death up as a poetic character, you know, the way people personify death to be able to explain it. And she's been sort of assailed by what you could term as being three graces, although they're male, they're Victorian dressed, they're villainous looking. Um, it's a bit like Penelope Pitstop and uh, the, the Hooded Claw. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's a threatening sort of uh, voice over virtue, um, triumph of evil over innocence. But it's a staged, um, if you look closely, the, the ocean looks staged, it looks painted, it looks uh, as you would get in a theatre, you know, like on cardboard backgrounds. So, um yeah it adds that the uh theatricality to to the piece so it can be interpreted in however which way people deem fit mm, as highly appreciated by your fan base uh the theatrical components in your band have always been prominent and uh, this beautification of death that you speak about is rather obvious uh, in the image from the position of uh, the founder of Cradle of Filth how would you summarize the band biography through its lineup changes how do you mean uh, I mean how would you characterize the major lineup highlights throughout the complete story of Cradle of Filth um, that's very hard to answer yeah, we've, got, we've only got eight minutes and uh, we've got 12 records um, obviously, there's been possibly two great lineup, well, three lineup changes, and that was um, during the time when we recorded Vampire. So right back in the day when the the band fractured in two, um, and then the lineup changes that spawned Midian uh, with the sacking of Stuart Anstis, and then um, Lecter left. Although he does tour manage my other band, Devilment, now. So, um, and Nicholas Barker left. So, you know, that was Adrian Erlandson came on board and Paul Allender came back and Guy and Pires. Um, so that was a successful uh, turnaround. And also the latest one, the latest incarnation, where uh, through no fault of anybody's, we were due to. Uh, undertake a co-headline tour with Behemoth and Paul Allender, who moved to the United States, couldn't do the tour for whatever reason, family issues, I'm not sure. Um, and our other guitarist, uh, James McIlroy, had to have um, severe neck you know, surgery, had to undergo fusing of some neck cartilage or something, something to put him out of action. So basically, to undertake the tour, which we couldn't pull out of at the time, we had to find two new guitarists, and uh, subsequently we ended up with the lineup that we have now, because uh, it it worked so perfectly that we decided to keep the lineup as it was. And I think people are appreciative of that fact because both Hammer and the Witches and Cryptoriana, I think, are very testament to the fact that. We have a very strong double guitar orientated band now, as we did back in the glory days of Courty and the Beast of Midian. Mm, I see. After the extensive European tour you've got ahead of you that will finish in 2018, are there any plans to return to South America anytime soon, especially Colombia? 
Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know the exact dates as yet. We are under new management and uh, he's very um, adamant about um, undertaking release, you know, allowing people to know what's happening uh, at intervals. So we just released all the information, obviously, about the European leg in a couple of weeks time, maybe three weeks. The next leg of the the European, uh, the World Tour, in fact, will be announced. So we're looking, yeah, uh, you know, South America, Latin America, uh, North America, Canada, and then moving over to Japan, Australia, and then on to um, Philippines and um, I think Malaysia, or one of those destinations. But yeah, the 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 thing's going to be announced um, quite shortly. El Santuario del Rock. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you for your support. A Cradle of Filth, the new album comes out uh, September the 22nd the, via Nuclear Blast Entertainment. Um, check the website. Oh, sorry, the Facebook page, actually. is probably a better place to visit. Obviously, Cradle of Filth or Danny Filth Facebook as they're constantly being updated. So... If you want to see, you know, future dates, best place to visit. Also, um, upcoming lyric videos, you know, other information surrounding the band. I mean, it's an exciting time because obviously we've got a new album, so there's going to be plenty of stuff happening. Absolutely my pleasure.